Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. We've got a probably a, um, interesting, uh, perhaps insightful, perhaps um, I meant that with a C-I-T-E site, like insight. But anyway, um, we're going to talk about COVID-19 in the industry. And uh, Louis Bogariz is joining me today. We had a little bit of a LinkedIn chat and decided to put this episode out. Um, so looking forward to your comments, uh, looking forward to your thoughts. Um, and looking forward to your ideas for um, uh, keeping us a lot safer. Um, Lewis is with me from uh, Olivier Corporation, and um, he's the CEO president there. Uh, Lewis, I know uh, you're a popular guy in the industry, but uh, go ahead and give for our viewers who may not know you, take a, a few minutes there and give us your background, your history, and uh, brag about Olivier, because I love what you guys are doing over there. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, I've been in the industry longer than I'd, I'd like to admit. I think we're at 31 years or something like that. Um, I started out as a security guard, uh, worked my way up in the industry. I worked on the guarding side of the business for about 20 years and then transitioned to the system side. So I'm kind of a rare breed of guarding and systems combined together. So at Olivier, what we focus on is providing holistic security solutions to our customers. So we're in Southern California, which means we have a lot of class A high rises, office uh, properties, uh, large medical facilities. And so what we really focus on is bringing that security system and the personnel piece together um, so that the customer gets the best value for their buck. So that's that's what we're trying to do. Um, uh, people seem to like it and uh, we're enjoying ourselves. Yeah, I'm, it's I've, I've always been a fan of the human component. You know, the uh, uh, coming out of systems background and weapon systems, right, which were fairly well automated, but someone still had to tell us when it was okay to pull the trigger, right? right. And the security industry get, can get too techy sometimes and leave the people equation out, which you really need them at that moment of command and control uh, or, or the moment of making a decision about, you know, what to do next. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, don't, I don't see how those two marriages haven't happened quicker. I know there's a lot of large global companies that are, you know, trying to marry those pieces up. But, um, I, you know, what you guys have done from it, like, a forethought like it's this is the package you roll in the door with i think it's super valuable and, and i'm sure that the success you're having there's uh helping to, helping you grow the business yeah i mean you know the bottom line is people spend a lot of money on people and they spend a lot of money on systems and um a lot of times they don't get the most value out of either one of those right and the people component a lot of times is the most expensive part of a program and especially in our industry on the system side is completely left out of the equation right big beautiful screens you know, fancy stuff and nobody knows how to use it effectively, right? So, um, you know, being able to bring those things together is, is for me super important as somebody who used to sit in front of that stuff. And uh, well, we changed the VHS tapes back when I was doing, but you know, a little bit different. Now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, let's let's say we this will flip us into our show. So do your customers, do you take customers or do they go out to the trade shows typically? Um, and, you know, you take them around, maybe show them some newer things that they haven't seen before. Is that is that part of the business strategy you folks have? Yeah. So, I mean, the way this whole thing started is when I was at Allied Universal running their systems division, we would take clients to ISC because we would talk about technology with them. But being able to allow them to touch and feel it completely changed the experience. And oh, by the way, they got to go to Vegas, right? Which they enjoyed. <laughs> so um, we did at Olivier, I continued the tradition. This is our fifth year of taking people. So we had um, a total of 25 people that went. Uh, 12 of those were my people and 13 of them were clients. Uh, we had a client advisory board meeting. We had a private room where we were uh, hosted some vendors because not all the vendors were on the floor. And then the second day we went out on the floor and, you know, everybody was very optimistic. Um, we told everyone that if they were vaccinated, they didn't need to wear a mask. And if they were not vaccinated, we asked that they wear a mask. Um, we had one person out of our group wear a mask. So knowing that 50% of the population is vaccinated, we can see even within our group how that was received. But um, the show was great. Everybody was really, you know, happy to get out. You were there, right? Everybody was having a great time. Um, and really the only check and balance that I saw while we were there were the little thermal screeners, right? When you walked in, you put your wrist on it and you got a dot. Other than that, um, you know, I did not see 50% of the population of ISC wearing masks. I, I mean, maybe you saw something different, but I didn't see a lot of masks at the show. So, no. yeah. Yeah, there was... There was utter, uh, I think, freedom. I think, um, you know, PSA, we held PSA Tech, what, a, you know, six weeks ago or whenever that was. 
kind of the first event. I thought sort of been the industry tester. Um, it was a little bit different environment, a lot smaller, um, you know, um, maybe a little bit of a bubble there in the hotel. Um, and it was still masks required to be worn, except like when you sat down to eat or whatever. Right. And so that was adhered to quite a bit. Um, there, I did, there was a few times when I was sitting upstairs in the lounge and noticed that there was large groups of people and all of them had their masks dangling off their face. And so we weren't really, really good, but the outcome of that event was that everyone was so happy to see each other. And we had a really unique thing there that I hadn't seen before, but um, there were different colored lanyards. So green was like, I'm vaccinated. You can hug me because I haven't seen you in a year and a half. Um, I think yellow was um, fist bump, but, you know, keep your distance. And red was like, no, stay back from me. Keep your mask on. Um, so that was kind of a nice visual indicator of people's, I think, comfortability with themselves and with being there. Um, I come from Hawaii, so we hug a lot. So I was hunting down everybody with the green lanyard and hugging yeah. them. That's what I do. Yeah. Um and then afterwards, we didn't, I didn't hear of any cases. So I was like, all right, it seems like, it seems like maybe this is going to be possible and ISC is going to be a go. Now, you know, we knew that the event was going to happen. We didn't know how many people would show up. A lot of vendors had pulled out. Right. Um, but Christine had to speak. So we, you know, we knew we'd be there that morning. So, you know, we, we decided to go. Arriving in Vegas, it was real obvious. There weren't going to be any masks born right. in Nevada anywhere, right? So that totally different environment from when we arrived in Denver um, for, for PSA. So, you know, the next morning, the, the hand scanners, right? So nobody wearing masks, but getting tested. So I'm like, well, I guess that's good. Right. You know, I, I didn't, I felt, I thought it was odd. Anyway, I, I thought it was okay. I mean, it's nice to have some sort of scanning going on, but um, what were they going to do if you, if you were, had a temperature? Do you know? I, I don't know. I didn't see anybody no. not pass the thing. No, I didn't. I didn't see it either. You know, and there are various impressions of you know how effective those were anyway, right? Which yeah. we know. So, um, but you know, look, we were all very positive when we were there. We felt, you know, we were. It was a very positive event. Really, I didn't have any negative feelings about the entire thing until I got home. And yeah. so, you know, we were home for two days, and my phone rings, and it's I don't want to call anybody out. It's somebody that was at the show, and they said, "Hey, I got COVID." And my heart just went, oh, God, like, you know, just stuff we didn't really think about, because like you said, Andrew, at PSA, it was great. Like, we didn't hear about any cases, right? And I kind of assumed we had this thing figured out. And then I'm like, okay. And then the phone rings again. I have COVID. And so we had, of the group we took, we had three people mm, that, okay. that got it. And so then I go into, well, okay. Um, my, you know, anybody that works for me has to quarantine for two weeks. So, you know, we go into that process, you know, we'll let other folks deal with it the way they deal with it. Um, but then we had to know, you know, I felt the responsibility to notify people. So any vendors that we met with at the show, we notified, right. But that was us of our own volition, making phone calls and, and letting, and sending emails and letting people know. Um, I sent then my entire crew that went you know, at 150 bucks a pop to get rapid tested, right? Immediately. So everybody got tested. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody came back negative, which was great. Um, and then the, probably the part, the part where I started to feel like, well, first of all, I heard other people had gotten it. So I'm thinking, okay, mm -hmm. other people have gotten it, but nobody's notified me. And then, and look, I'm not, you know, we're, we'll talk a little bit from an after action standpoint, Andrew, you know, as well as me, the number one thing in an after action review is you don't want to assess blame, right? We're just trying to learn. But yeah. when we notified, you know, when we notified Reed, you know, we got kind of the canned response of, you know, if you were in close contact with anyone, please let them know. And we're following CDC protocols, which they were, you know what I mean? And that was it. But, you know, if I weren't in the situation I was in and one of my employees had been around somebody else who had had COVID and I bring them home and then they infect everybody. And now I've got 10 people out for two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be crippling to a business. And so when we're bringing all these people together, I just thought if my folks weren't the only people there and if three of my 25 that went got it, so say 10%, 7%, whatever. I mean, how many thousands mm -hmm. of people were there? That means yeah. there were literally hundreds of cases of COVID as a result of that event. And yeah. I heard nothing. And so that's really at the point where I went on LinkedIn and I went, you know what? 
we need to talk about this because yeah. we have to do better. We're security and safety industry leaders. And we just went to an event where nobody was wearing masks. We're using this little wrist scanner and we're calling it good. And we're supposed to be setting the example, right? For, for the rest of the country. Um, and so that's why I really put it up there. Not that I know exactly what the solution should be. I know that it could have been catastrophic to my business. I could have had multiple people come back and I had to quarantine them. I was very fortunate. Um, and I just, I don't know. I mean, it just seemed to me like there should have been the opportunity for there to be more communication. And, and you know, I don't know, contract tracing used to be a thing, right? And I don't, does that even exist? Because, you know, there was no opportunity to do that at the show. So, you know, I don't know. I just, it, for me, it, it was a situation where it just seemed like a lot more should have been done. And us as leaders going into the into shows where, you know, Reed's putting it on, but you know, it's SIA and PSA and us as leaders, yeah. you know, that are that are doing this, right? We can't put this on Reed. Um, no. This is us as industry leaders, right? Deciding what sure. this is going to look like going forward. And the last thing we want is create like a super spreader event, right? Because of something that we're doing, right? And we send a bunch of people home with COVID. So. So that's what happened and that's kind of what started the dialogue. So, I mean, you know, I obviously you saw a lot of people had a lot of opinions on this. Um, and, you know, I just think we, you know, I just think we can do better, I guess is the bottom line from my standpoint. I, and I, I think we're gonna have to, I'm, I'm not sure why. So I've, I had the Apple um, contact tracing, you know, on my phone and I didn't get any alerts from that. And so I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that the people that I, I know that got it, that I was near, very near, um, didn't have it turned on or didn't report it to the app that they had come up positive. You know what I mean? So there, there's some sort of universal tools baked into some of our technology that could be used to alert us. It isn't like we need to, as an industry, build another one or per event, have one or register for it, but maybe that would be a good idea. Um, it, to your point, if if there were nine thousand at the event and at ISC West, and ten percent or so were infected, you know that's nearly a thousand people right. that went went home. And like in Hawaii, is fairly well vaccinated, like sixty percent, but our um, the current spread rate is like almost seven right. percent. So if those thousand people, whoever they came around, let's just say it was five hundred in that next week, if they were infected and, and say they're vaccinated and didn't even know they had it, right. you know, 7% right. of the people that they came around vaccinated or not potentially are infected. And so, you know, to your point, there's no, there's no way for us. Um, if we're going to be leaders, we need to be able to somehow follow that data or alert people, or maybe uh, have a, an institutional practice or a per company practice of, uh, sort of isolation upon return or something like that, right? Not maybe don't have to quarantine at home, but home office, you know, wear a mask for the next two weeks, get tested, you know, three days later, seven days later. In Hawaii, it's still free for a resident as long as you're not um, traveling. It's not for travel, so it's no good for travel, but it is good if you live here and you just want to go get tested. Um, and it's, you know, they you get the results back in about a day. So, but but still to your point, we could lose our people for that whole day because, you know, obviously, um, you'd like to have them tested before they come back to the office, right? Yeah. And so for us it was, it's $150 a pop, right? So, you sure. know, I, so I drop a couple grand testing people, which, you know, is the right thing to do. But, um, you know, yeah, it's just one of the situations where, you know, even if it were informally notifying, you know, even if it were just like, a, hey, we're not trying to track anyone, we're not trying to invade anyone's privacy. But if your company has a positive, send a note. Right. Just mm -hmm. so that they, you know, just to get some general, just some general information, because again, if I hadn't been told by these people, I wouldn't have tested anybody and yeah. I wouldn't have known. But I think it's I, I don't think we're being unreasonable, Andrew, and assuming 10 percent of the folks there got COVID. I mean, somewhere, but, you know, I, I'm not trying to create history, yeah. you know, between five and 10 percent, I think is a reasonable amount, which means. Yeah. And other than you and I getting personal phone calls from people, there were no notifications. So 600 people at a trade show got COVID and we have no idea if we were around them or anyone else was around them or anything happened. And so, you know, um, when we even sell contract trade, contact tracing in our industry, right? As a, as a product. I think so. 
but we don't even, you know, so it was just one of these things where I'm like, you know, I, we were fortunate because we were notified and we could react to it, but there were a lot of people that went home from that show and they weren't notified. And, you know, of the three of mine that got, you know, that I'm aware of, two were vaccinated, one was unvaccinated. The two vaccinated mm. people, you know, didn't have really strong symptoms and, you know, and the one that wasn't did, but, you know, there are people that were vaccinated that would have very mild symptoms and they wouldn't even know unless somebody said, hey, there was some COVID at, at the show, you might want to go get tested. Or like you said, maybe, you know, uh, maybe it is a standard practice that you get tested when you come back. I, you know, I, I mean, every company is going to decide to do this however they want, but I just thought it was important for them to know it was there. And um, I wanted to let folks know that because I didn't see any type of formal note of, you know, Reed didn't contact uh, anybody to say, you know, and I'm not putting this on them. I'm just saying they weren't going to notify anyone. Um, sure. And other than, pers you know, people taking personal responsibility for this, I didn't get any other notifications from any other companies either, right? It was all person to person yeah. individual notifications. So that just felt odd to me, you know, that there yeah. was a level of responsibility, I guess, ultimately, you know. Yeah, we could. We can definitely do better with our leadership. I tell you what, we're going to pay some bills. Uh, Lewis, and I'll be back in just one minute, so stick around. Hi, I'm Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, we're back. Um, thanks for joining us on Security Matters again. Louis Bogarides is here with me, and we are a little concerned about how we're leading um, as a security industry uh, in, through these times of COVID. You know, Delta, this variant, I think, caught us all off guard. You know, we were getting comfortable with our shows. We were getting comfortable with our mandates. We're wearing masks. We're getting vaccinated. Uh, we had a PSA Tech show um, that went well. Then we had an ISC West show that went well. I mean, everyone loved the show. I haven't heard anybody. Everybody's glad to get back together as an industry. But we know there were a lot of cases that came out of that, uh, vac both vaccinated people and unvaccinated people. Um, who got COVID. And I've, I've, had, I've had some friends that were vaccinated that got sick from this new variant that they caught. So um, it's, this is not uh, something we should take lightly. And, um, you know, Lewis brought up the point already that we've got an impact to our workforce that comes back. If they're infected, they've got to quarantine for a couple of weeks. You might lose those people and their productivity. You've also got to maybe pay for their test, depending on where you're at. In Hawaii, we can get that done for free, but not in Los Angeles. So if you, you know, depending on the size of your workforce, um, there's a bit of risk now that you have to look at. There's an impact to having them go to these future events. And uh, I don't think the events are stopping. Um, I'm, I'm glad, I guess. I guess I'm glad they're not stopping. But maybe we can do better to lower this impact or potential impact uh, of this Delta variant that seems, seems to cross an awful lot of boundaries awful quickly um, in comparison to the the earlier version that we seem to be able to crush with vaccination and masking and social distancing, that maybe is not going to be enough now. So what could we do next, Lewis, going forward? I mean, how how stringent you think we need to be uh, upon arrival, you know, compared to just the uh, temperature check that we did at ISC West? Yeah, I think so. You know, we have, so we have a lot of large medical providers, as you do too, you know, that we do business with. And, you know, they, we just got a notice today that they will require the vaccine for yep. everyone or a recent negative test, one or the other. So why wouldn't we as an industry require the same thing, right? And, and, and really, you know, this isn't a, you know, hey, I'm trying to take your personal freedoms out. I'm not, you know, we're not politicizing what's going on. We're not trying to do any of that. But if we take personnel to these shows, we don't want to have to come home 
and quarantine our staff for two weeks. So, you know, really, this is a business decision, right? We want everybody there, everybody there healthy, and then get everybody home healthy. Now, there's a plane ride home, there's a plane ride there, there's, you know, if we were in Vegas, there's all the time people spent, I don't even want to think about where people spent their time in Vegas, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of other stuff going on, but we have to do our part. So I think, you know, so if you think about that, um, you know, if you're not, mac you know, if you're not vaccinated, you're wearing a mask, if you're, uh, you know, or maybe, you know, where we requiring masks for everyone, you know, or you're, we're requiring a, a recent negative test just as a starting point. And I know, uh, Andrew, you were talking about folks that are putting shows on that are requiring vaccinations, right? For everyone that's attending them. So, you know, I just, there was a lot of optimism. You know, we had just, we were like crushing this thing. And then we went to the show and everything changed. Really, while we were there, a lot of the guidance changed, right? And so I get it. I mean, I get that there was a ton of optimism, but, you know, our jobs as security leaders and health leaders is to, you know, stay uh, in contact with the times and what's going on and react to it. And, and that's what's happening right now. So, you know, I think uh, at a minimum, it would be nice to see those. And again, you know, we talked about it, but what happened to contact tracing? I mean, is that... Is that just a theory? I mean, does it, you know, does it really happen? You know, um, I don't know. You know, I just, those are some basic things I think that could be done that would, you know, completely change. I, I, I think it would take a lot of risk out of the, you know, out of the show in general. Yeah, and the, and the impact of contact tracing is fairly minimal. I mean, you know, this is an app, so that way, and it's fairly good. It's going to be post-event, right? So, you know, all we would find out is after the fact, if someone reported that they had a positive test, and you know, then you you would find out that you were around them. But at least you could go get tested and not unintentionally be spreading the virus that you may have because you're asymptomatic. So right. I think I think there's value in that idea, uh, 100. Um, percent I I know there's a there's people protesting down at Hawaii's state building or start county hall this morning about going back to mandating masks, but maybe. Um, for sure, obviously, it's always a voluntary thing that you can wear a mask at the show. Maybe that advice needs to be pushed a little bit. Um, that seems to help with the spread. We know social distancing isn't going to happen, right? Because we're at a show. Everybody right. wants to get together. So they're going to be standing close. And, and when you know, through a mask, you got to stand in close. I don't know about your experience, but it's harder yeah. to hear, right? Oh, so sure. um, so it's a it's a little bit of an anti-distancing sort of uh, of, a, of, a, of a problem there, but um, you know maybe that has to happen. Uh, maybe um, maybe it'd be nice to know, like the way PSA did, people who are vaccinated or who aren't or who want to be, um, you know, the red, yellow, green uh, lanyard type idea, right? Who are aren't afraid to be contacted or who are like stay away. Maybe that would give some more comfort to everyone and be an additional level of assurance that um, the people who do go there um, could have for you know maintaining some boundaries. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure what else we can do. I, I'm not a fan of, of um, kind of going backwards. I, I, I like that the industry is cranking back up again. Uh, business is strong. It was strong through COVID. Security industry is one of those kind of industries. It's very resilient. Um, what are, What are your thoughts? Do you What do you think the impact would be if if we asked the industry to to not show up if they weren't vaccinated, just that, or if they weren't willing to wear a mask the whole time? What do you think would happen? I mean, you know, look, I, you know, again, I, I mean, I take this back to you know, used to be if you worked in a hospital and you didn't get the flu vaccine. You had to wear a mask, right? Yeah. So, like, if you okay. know, that was just the policy, right? And a lot of the hospitals out here are kind of leading the way around what should happen, right? And you know, it's you're vaccinated, or you're going to show a recent negative test, and you're going to mask up, right? That's what's going to happen. Um, you know, we're we're leaders in this industry, right? We you know we have this obligation to set the example, in my opinion. So you know. I don't have an issue with people being at a show that aren't vaccinated if they're willing to mask up. I just think then we should see 50% of the show wearing masks, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, I think the other thing, you know, Andrew, that's interesting, we talked about it when we first started talking, is we were doing thermal screening at that show. And we know that's not an effective screening method. Now, right. Reed's doing it because it, reads, it meets the requirement. But for us as industry leaders to have a show 
that says whatever ISC says, you know, security industry, global, this, that, GSX, the global thing, and be doing thermal screening. Because, you know, regardless of how anybody feels about how the actual thermal screeners work, it is not an effective tool to, to, to provide a healthy environment. We know that, right? right? right. Um, so I think those are the things where we look at this and we just go, you know, I, I, we don't put the shows on, but we have leadership in roles that support these shows. And I just think that that conversation about how we role model what we're doing and the dialogue around what we're doing um, needs to be stepped up and, and regardless of where we end up. And, and it was just, you know, ISC was one of those things where I think everybody felt like we were on the down, you know, we were, we were over the hump. And they're like, all right, over half the people are going to be vaccinated. We're going to tell everyone to wear masks. We're going to screen them and we're all good. And it didn't work. And now the numbers are worse, right? We're at 70% capacity, over 70% capacity in our ICUs here in LA, and it's getting worse. And so we don't want to contribute to the problem. So, you know, I think, you know, when you look at that and you say, okay, um, you're either vaccinated or you're showing a recent negative test and you're masking up. I mean, it doesn't sound unreasonable to me. I know some people might have an issue. It might affect attendance a little bit, but I mean, isn't the priority really getting everybody there and home safely? I mean, that, that really should be ultimately the priority, right? So, yeah. Um, and especially for, especially for a security industry, you know, I, and we're going to Florida, right? Florida is not uh, doing well. Um, their cases are skyrocketing. Um, we've got what, six weeks, maybe six weeks till the show, five weeks. So there's plenty of time if you're watching the show today, maybe to consider, you know, what you're going to do to help. Um, you know, there's time that I think it, uh, what I read, it takes about a month after, you know, you've had so your shot, then two weeks go by another shot. And then um, a few weeks later, you probably got full, full uh, immunity, but that's one way you can protect yourself and potentially don't, I can't tell about the, the spread, right? It just seems like this thing, um, it, it, you know, vaccinated people tend to carry it as well. So keep, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, so when you return, you don't come back, infect your office or your family, maybe, um, you know, work on a little bit of, uh, you know, you'd hate, hate that to be masked at home until you can get tested, but, you know, maybe presume infection. If you had thought about it that way, how would you act? Maybe there's a different sort of way to think about it. We've got a, about a minute left and I'm talking too much, Lewis. What, um, What's your heartfelt plea for our industry, man? You're a leader amongst men out here. So what, uh, give us your, um, give us your ask. Well, no, I, I would just ask that as is, and you know, the other folks putting on GSX, cause that's the next big show, put their thinking caps on, look at some industry best practices and make some really, you know, uh, effective uh, recommendations and suggestions for the show. It's an opportunity for us to show leadership, to role model the right way to do this. If we want to stay open, we have to do this the right way. So I would challenge them to, uh, to do that and, uh, you know, have a spirited dialogue around this and then let's figure it out. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. I hope we get it figured out. I hope we continue to lead and, and our industry has that opportunity sitting in front of us. Thanks for joining us today, Lewis. Thanks for taking the time. And I will hope, uh, hopefully see you soon, sir, in the flesh with a mask. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. Aloha.